This is my very battered and bruised copy of the topographic map of the North Bay area. In Canada, we have a complete set of topographic maps that are available either to purchase or now they have websites where you can use them online and print off the versions that you want. They're called topographic maps because they show the topography. I don't know if you guys can see over the video, but these brown lines show the contours of the landforms. So you can see here, these brown lines close together are showing the escarpment along here. And the wetlands down here. We also have all of the habitations marked, so the red roads and the pink cities, orange side roads. Lots of other useful information, schools and churches and airports and graveyards and all those things are marked on here as well. Mining sites are marked. The information was updated in different years. So you'll often see on GPS's NAD 27 or NAD 83. That's based on the 1983 update is NAD 83. Newer topo maps have a little bit more new information based on satellite imaging, but the bulk of the data is still from that 1983 and some of it is still from that 1927 survey. So often there's outdated information on these maps. But I wanna show you some of the key things. Down here we have the scale. So it's showing you one kilometer markers. So that's four kilometers and they've split them up and also has it in miles. Here is the declination for this map, particularly. We were talking about declination, true north, um, marked with the star and along the sides we have the longitude and latitude in the UTM grid. So these black and gray bands are lines of longitude and they're all equal distance apart. These lines up here are lines of latitude and they actually get wider as you go further north because of the curvature of the earth. So those ones are marked out here, 79 degrees, 30 minutes. So this is 31 minutes, 32, 33, 34. Oh wait, no, going the other way, obviously, because silly Oriana. Greenwich mean time is this way. <laughs> So if this is 30, this is 29, 28, 27, 25, 26, 25, 24, because we're counting from the prime meridian and working this way. And then this is 46 degrees, 15 minutes north, and it's actually moving north because it starts the equator. So if this is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and it has a upgrade there. These ones, are less used on maps because those lines you have to draw on. You need to take a ruler or whatever it is you're using and actually draw those onto the map and actually physically draw them. Whereas the UTM grid is already on the map. Here on the lake it's obvious you can see these blue squares they are a kilometer by a kilometer and they are also marked in light blue. So here, this one, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And this one here is showing you that 17 stands for 617000. So in the lecture, I was showing you how some of the old maps only showed three numbers. These are the numbers that they were basing that upon. Here, the 23, 24, 25 is 5124000. So it's just showing you to the closest kilometer where you're fitting on that grid system. 
but those blue lines cover the entire grid. In fact, it's how I use, when I'm paddling, I use the blue grid lines to give myself an idea of how far I've traveled because my thumb is almost exactly one kilometer. So it's very easy for me to then kind of estimate how far I've traveled quick and easy. Other people will use a string. Another really handy thing with the, the grid lines is that most compasses have a Romer scale that fits over those uh, UTM grid lines pretty well. So I put zero and zero where these two meet up. Then this one says 10 and this one says 10. And that allows me to break, evenly break that kilometer up into 10 increments pretty quickly, which is a handy tool to have. A lot of the compasses will have, this is a one to 50,000 map. And some compasses will have a one to 50,000 and a one to 25,000, which this one has. You can see there's another scale here from zero to 10 and there's one from zero to 10. So the smaller one is for the one to 50,000 and this larger one is one for the one to 25,000. Often you'll see them on the two corners of the compass. My other compass has them on the two corners. So with this, we can do different kinds of triangulation. When we do this in lab, I usually start by giving you some UTM coordinates. They always start 17T because that is the grid, the square that North Bay is in. The entire world is cut into a grid kind of battleship style with numbers and letters. And the part of Canada where North Bay is, is 17T. In fact, in the lecture, I show you a global map of the UTM grid, and that's where those letter number systems are. So that cuts the world down to one square. And within 17T, then we have a numbering system. So I want us to find 17T618750513332. And I've gone to the nearest 50 and 100 because it's difficult on a map where the squares are one kilometer to go more than that. With our Romer scale, that subdivides each one of these squares into 10 dots, which is 100 meters. And then you can sort of estimate half of that. But estimating more than half or quarter of that becomes more difficult with precision. So we would look on the sides here and this blue number down here says 5124 so that is this number 5133 so if i follow the 5124 25 26 27 28 29 30 33 so that's 5133 and then 300 so then i would take that blue square and go up 300, where's my paint? Two hundred, three hundred is there. So that line, and some people would draw that pencil line on the map. I'm just gonna leave this piece of pink here for now and grab my other piece of pink for later. And then this other number means that must be the, the bottom one. So 618, and I need, this one starts at 617. So here's 618, and I follow 618 up to along here. And then I want 618750. So I know that I want to be in this square because I've already got this pink line here. So then I can put, where are my blue lines? And I'm looking for 618 
and I'm going six one eight seven fifty. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So that point right there is these coordinates, which is the lookout on top of Tebow Hill, which is convenient because then in the lecture or the lab, I then give you coordinates from the top of that hill. So that's how you would use coordinates to find some place on a map. And then I could like, now that I know that place, I can look at the map and find the best road work system to get there. So that goshawking job I was talking about, we would be given coordinates, we would use maps to get as close as we could, and then we would use a GPS to try and get us even closer once we are off the road network. Now that we've found this lookout, let's pretend we're standing on the lookout and what we can see in different directions. So if I'm standing at the top of this hill and I look down and I see a tall building in the distance and I'm trying to figure out what it is, I can use this map to try to help me figure that out. So from the top of this hill on the map, I can see that there is a, the shopping mall here. I could probably see that from the top of the map and wonder what it was. And I could probably see the water tower down here. That's a pretty tall thing that I could probably see from the top here. So when you're trying to figure those sorts of things out, if I know where I am, I can then say I'm doing the shopping mall. I can do a line. So on the map, if I'm here and the shopping mall is there, I can then put my compass so the middle is where I'm standing and I'm lining up north with the north lines on map north. So I've got my map north figured out. I'm not looking at where magnetic north is. So the blue UTM lines are going to map north. And I can see that this pink line of sight is at 160 degrees. So then in real world, I could pick up, I could turn this compass to 160 degrees and I could pick it up and use it to find what direction 160 degrees is and then see if the shopping mall is along that line of sight. So those are the two different ways that you can use a compass and a map. One is to take coordinates and plot them onto the map the other is to start with coordinates and figure out what direction you're going to.